Hey, congratulations for Trapaldi Unleash. Thank right? you. Thank you. So what attracted you to a project like this? Uh, to be able to start working in America. I think that's, uh, there's, it's not really a choice, it was, it was fate. Oh really? You know, sometimes you don't choose your project, the project chooses you. And uh, that's how, you know, your, your next step in life begins. So, so how did this script came across to, on, onto you, like into your hands, you know, onto your desk? So we are constantly researching on what kind of projects I, I can fit, so me and my, uh, my friend. And we came up with this project and then, because we can't submit ourselves over here in the US, so we asked my manager to submit me. And then same process, they called me in for the audition. You, you, you do what you do best in the audition and if that works out, it works out and that's what happened. And um, that's how it kind of one thing led to another. So you always wanted to go into American cinema? I mean, because, you, because you've done a lot of projects in um, Indian cinema before. Yes, yes, uh, I mean, Hollywood is global, right? Yeah. And who doesn't want to be global? So um, it's not about um, whether I just want to do this and not do that, or just do that and not this. It's not that. It's just about doing good work. And right now, since the world's opening up, internet, travel is being easy, um, auditions, you can do self-tape. You know what I mean? So things are becoming more convenient. So when you have such an opportunity, you'd be an idiot not to kind of take advantage of it. So I'm just trying to take advantage of, uh, of, um, of the world changing its pace and looking at um, ethnicity um, more keenly and giving us more opportunities. Um, so I feel that we should just kind of be wise and uh, jump into that. Don't you consider this still somewhat an Indian movie since it's all Indian cast? I think it's, uh, the story is definitely um, Indian and the traditions are Indian. Um, but the only good thing is that it's like Slumdog Millionaire is an Indian movie, uh, except it's not. Yeah, you know true. what I mean? So, um, and so many other films. Um, so, like Victoria and Abdul, you can say that, okay, they have a mixed cast, so can it be mixed? It, but it's, it's not about that, I guess. It's just where the film is produced. You know, the film's produced in Hollywood, it's in Hollywood film. And if that can get you um, the next Hollywood film, that's what matters because, well, this um, country is the American dream, right? That's right. If you work hard, you're going to get it. And um, I feel that I'm willing to put in the effort. How about uh, doing the film in English? It was in English. I know. I, oh, what, okay. what the, How about that experience doing the film in English? Oh, man. Um, nothing new, really, because um, I studied in New York Film Academy. I've studied in a Victorian College of Arts. I've studied... Um, I'm studying in London um, with a coach called Dr. Das. So over the years, we've always constantly been practicing English scripts. And um, when we look at the benchmark of good scripts, we always look at Hollywood. So when we have to read plays, for example, whether it be from, um, you know, um, from anybody, Bernard Shaw or, or even uh, Chekhov, his plays, whatever it is, we, we had to read that as was in, in our schools just to understand good writing, good story, good character, um, good imagination. So I feel that doing this film in, in English was just, it's, it's, it's just about time, you know, and it had no difference as such. Well then let's talk about your character that you play here. He, he's like stuck in a, I don't want to say a love triangle, it's like a love square or... <laughs> I love, love rhombus maybe. Yeah, and, something yeah. like that, yeah. Um, so Draupadi, if you know the Indian mythology, it's about... Um, it's about this one woman who gets, uh, who has to be married to five brothers, and that's why Draupadi. That's how Draupadi has come in. And um, could you please repeat your question again? I would say just just talk about the character, like why 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 you love that character so much. I think the character is, um, I mean, I love love, right? And I think that being able to being able to portray or bring in those emotions for the audience. Is, um, is always very blissful, always brings a smile on the audience's face. So why, I'm very, why do I love this character is, first of all, it's based in the 1930s, so the character is very reserved, very innocent, very pure. Um, it's all about love at first sight. So it just, it just kind of took me back into the days when, um, when I was like 15, and I was like, you know, you fall in this, this puppy love, 
mm-hmm. and it's like um, you don't need anything else it's just about looking at her even if she's like far away you don't need to touch her there's nothing it's just so it's that purity which um, is why I love this character could you uh, explain for a lot of viewers a lot of pe- viewers don't understand this uh, this Indian culture back then where you know with arranged marriages and you know your character basically had to keep his distance um, from um, and respect you know um, all of this could you talk about that about people not understanding the, yeah well it's a good thing that people don't understand right like um, I'm reading this one book it's called the path and it's about um, how we all believe uh, in certain realities right now in the in, in the Western world but the the Asian community such as Confucius had uh, in 500 BC had such incredible thoughts it almost it's, it's almost equivalent to uh, let's say um, the Bhagavad Gita for example and I didn't know about Confucius so now when I'm reading I'm understanding his thoughts I'm understanding his rituals for example he um, just anything any tradition that he does at that point in the morning um, I read about it and I'm like I didn't know that people over there would do something like this but it's because I don't understand I'm looking at it more keenly so when people don't know about this subject when they watch the film they'll not only go back by um, um, feeling something they will also go back learning something they'll go back with oh so this is what happens in the tradition it's not like arranged marriages don't happen now it just don't happen when the girl is 16 years old Mm -hmm. Uh, but it does still happen so um, cultures are different and um, it's an opportunity for everybody to um, to kind of um, embrace uh, different traditions so what do you hope that uh, viewers and audience would learn if by watching a film like this Um, they would actually so it's very self uh, they they will introspect so everybody in the film has a very um, this the family itself is very dysfunctional and because everybody has a very gray shade into them in them I think that that's what people are going to learn they're going to start questioning what they do in life like hey I did this would this be considered um, not not moral or non ethical right so I guess that's what people are going to go back with besides that they're definitely going to go back um, with a feeling of love and a feeling of um, and the main thing that they would go back with is, I'm glad that this woman took this stand and it's about woman empowerment. So I think that's what people are mostly going to take back, these three points. Which is quite unusual because there's not a lot of women empowerment movies out there that's, that's in this fashion. There are actually none because most of the time when you look at British India before 1946, you always look at it as slavery. You always look at it as the day that the British have done something, but in this, it's not about that. It's a British Indian, the British Indian family who are rich or not poor, and who are just having, based on their traditional uh, boundaries, they're having their own dysfunction, and but the emotions are all consistent, which can relate to everybody. So, now Nisha wrote a book, yeah, uh, so, so associated with this. Were you introduced at the book at all, or you just based it all on the script? So Nisha spoke to us about the script, I mean, sorry, about the book, and uh, she just told us certain parts to read and what would make our character come out more. Um, besides that, it was mostly the director's take and how um, Tony, and how Tony had done a lot of research and he shared his research with us, which is what I mostly was um, indulging in. So yeah, it was kind of like a mixture of uh, both. Excellent. Um, correct me if I get the actress's name wrong. Ser- Serena? Selena. S- Selena. Selena. How was um, acting alongside with her? I think she's a very, um, in- she has an incredible energy and that's what's most important. Um, she, she had the, I guess she had the most amount to shoot and uh, she was always, she was always a team player and um, um, she's, she's, she's very talented. She's very young, but she's very talented. I think that working with, I would love to do another something with her, whether it be a series or, so I think that she's great and she's going to go a long way. Have, have you, have you done romantic scenes before per, personally before? Too many times. <laughs> Too many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I have, I have. It's that's, I mean, that's like part of the game, right? Well, I'm not. I'm not familiar, like, uh, with the Indian movies that uh, you have done. Is it typically like romance or? 
Bollywood. It would be Bollywood romance. Um, but um, the the cliche or the the belief of running behind trees and things like that that's not existent at the moment. It it was very brief moments in history where that would have happened, and that too only because of censorship. Um, and it would it would be more of a symbolism. Or nowadays we don't need symbolism. Everybody is quite open, um, especially with um, foreign cultures coming in with Netflix and Amazon and name it. I mean, everything on the click of a phone right now, right? So people are more open. People are just more understanding, and especially in the metropolitan cities where Bombay or Delhi or Madras, wherever, but it's open. So um, yeah, in the films right now, um, there's definitely romance. There's definitely. Um, um, love scenes, love making scenes, and uh, it might be shot aesthetically, and uh, but it's still there. So, how did you get your start in the, in this in the business? Why do you love acting so much? Why do I love acting so much? Two reasons. Um, so, the first reason is that um, sometimes I don't understand myself, and I feel like um, like I want to escape myself, right? Uh, there might not be any um, uh, justifiable reason to it, but uh, I feel as an actor, you get to, ex and once you reach a pinnacle where you actually get to choose your characters, then you get to show facets of yourself which you know are inside you, but you can't express, mm -hmm. right? Um, even if it's a negative role for that matter. I know many people who would like to do something which is, which is so-called negative, Right or be the bad guy, but it's just like a it's like a fantasy, yeah. right? And uh, it's somewhere in you, right? And um, I feel that as an actor, as an, being an actor, you get to explore all these different sides of you, and you start discovering more, th more and more about yourself. That's one reason. The second reason is that um, um, as much as I I, I I love money, I can't uh, can't run behind it, right? I like to run behind my um, my passion. And I feel that no matter what crisis comes in the world now, financial crisis, it doesn't matter. But if you have talent and you've got skill inside you, nobody can take that away. No money, no crisis can take that away. So all the effort that I put into myself today will show tomorrow, but no money can take it away from me. So I can, again, I can, I can rebuild myself again. So I feel that that's two reasons why I want to be an actor. So, in the future, what do you hope that you would love to play if you had a dream role? If I had a dream role over here? Yeah. Um, so like, a, like, a, like an example of a movie? Perhaps? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so as an actor, I would like to play um, either the, the aviator or I would like to play, I mean, uh, the film which changed my life was, um, was Scarface, right? So um, a character like that, um, I would love to play. Besides that, um, just being um, a South Asian um, being, um, I think that if, if I had to change the portrayal of South, South Asians right now over here, I would uh, love to be part of an action film. Mm -hmm. A huge action film, which is um, like, let's say Deadpool. Yeah. Or and and I can bring that thing to the table, and I feel that we just need an opportunity for South Asians to be able to port portray a lead character, um, like like let's say Jason Statham or Gerard Butler or whatever it is. Like there should be a South Asian who should be able to do all that. So that's something that I want to do. Since uh, you brought up a good point, don't you think, uh, at, because uh, Deadpool, there, was a, there, there is an Indian actor in, in that film. Uh, Victoria Abdul was, was a lead. Ali, Ali Tazo, yeah. yeah. Um, do, do you think your South Asians are making strides in, in recent years? Yeah, that's like, I think that they are definitely making strides. Uh, maybe the character in Deadpool was a bit cliched, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but it was good because that got him seen in the market. Right, and hopefully he will get to choose varied roles and not just stick to that kind of a role. So when I say that, like let's say, like you said, Victoria and Abdul, it's a big, it's a big, op it's a big uh, leap into what. Um, but then again, the film was based in that time and that, so you need a character which is based. But something like Quantico, 
mm -hmm. for example, right? That is a film, I mean, that's a series where the lead was a South Asian, was Priyanka Chopra. Of course, she's a huge star back at home. But again, there was no one who was leading a show who was South Asian. That's true. Right? And especially a show like this, right? Which was CIA based and whatnot, right? So I feel that's a big stride. Victoria Abdul definitely is a big stride. Um, whatever, even Kumail Nanjiani for that, for that matter. I mean, once his film was nominated for the Oscars and now he's touted everywhere, right? So I guess things are changing and uh, things are just looking up and more and more characters are going to be colorblind and we can be, we, I mean, actors such as myself shall be able to play varied roles and uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. Excellent. Well, let me wrap it up with, with uh, one simple thing. So does this mean that you are going to start pursuing Amer more American projects and not going back to uh, India? I am definitely going to keep pursuing projects over here. Um, going back to India is uh, not really, I mean, going back to it, not going back to India is not really an option because I, uh, I have built a base there. So now the, now the struggle is to basically be able to spend two months here and then two months there and then two months here, two months there and constantly make it happen and then cut it down to one month there, one month here, one month there so that you can manage both the markets. It's a struggle, but if you want both the markets, you gotta, you gotta put in the hard work. And real, real fast, who, who, who do you, where do you want to be more popular in here or there? In the world. The world. <laughs> You have the big picture of the world. It's the world, man. I mean, the wireless. I mean, like I said, Hollywood is worldwide. Everybody watches it. Every the trend starts in Hollywood, or in or in the Western world, and then it moves downwards. It moves that way towards the eastern side of the of the world. So, so yeah, I definitely want to be known. I definitely want to do work in all the industry, whether it be the the Hollywood industry, whether it be the Indian industry, Indian industry, but Bollywood. Again, we have too many industries in India. But I would also like to work in the Arab industry since I'm from Dubai, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, right now there's some great shows which are being made in in the Arab world, and I've got some great concepts. So why not? You know, I think that doing good work, doing good stories, getting those things out to the people on the right platform, so you get reviewed, and then it's in God's hand how much, whether you become Michael Jackson or not. It's really it's not up to you. All you can do is put your hard work in. So. That's true. Well, anyway, say hey, congratulations, and you're you're making the right step. Thank you, sir. Thank you for speaking. Thanks. Thank you.